What is up guys? Okay, so today I'm gonna make a video, obviously you can tell from the title, about my college acceptances and um, just basically how senior year has been because it's been like super stressful and I know I've watched like a bunch of these videos like on YouTube about like what schools people are going to, what schools they got accepted to, what schools they got declined from, um, and all that jazz, you know? Okay, so first I'm just gonna go and talk about my um, my scores, like my SAT, my ACT, and my GPA. Basically for us, we have like a GPA and then a college four point, which I'm pretty sure a lot of high schools have that. I'm pretty sure most high schools have that, but I'm not sure. Anyways, my college four point was like a 3.6, and for my um, unweighted GPA, I had a 94. So um, that can help you with what grades you have now. You can like, ask your counselor for your transcript and see what you have and my class rank was six but I go to a small school we only have 40 seniors so it's not like that high of a deal so I'm not even in the top 10% of my class and I'm number six now if I'm talking about my SAT and my ACT scores my ACT I took my sophomore year the end of my sophomore year and I never took it after that so um, once again I'm about to go close this door so for my um, ACT score, I took that my sophomore year, at the end of my sophomore year, and I never took it again because I didn't really like the test. It's like, a lot of people say the ACT is way easier. I think that the SAT is easier because I've taken the PSAT in previous years, so like I knew what that was all about. But the ACT was like totally new when I took it the first time and there was like science. Um, yeah, so basically I got a 21 on my ACT my sophomore year. So most of the time when I applied to college, I never really put that score on there because um, I wasn't really like super proud of that score. Um, I was fine with it my sophomore year, but like once I got to senior, I was like, yeah, this isn't really like the best score that I really want to put on my application. So like, I I mean, the college just saw it, but I didn't really like, it wasn't like a great thing. So I never really like, if they didn't ask for it, I didn't write it down anywhere. But for the SAT, I got an 1160 um, at the beginning of my junior year. I would recommend taking it again your senior year or like the end of your junior year because I'm pretty sure I could have got a higher score but um, I had an 1160 and it wasn't like that high but it wasn't low so I wasn't really worried about it. I also took it with the essay and um, I did not do good on the essay at all. I'm just going to go over everything that I had again. So my SAT I had an 1160, my ACT was a 21 and my um, college four point was a 3.6 and my GPA was a 94. So um, that can give you like rankings of like how you think you're doing or anything like that. So um, I'm also gonna talk about like clubs and organizations cause I think that's the main reason why I got into like my, the school that I really wanted to go to, my like um, number one choice school because their acceptance rate was only like 35 and they have 96,000 kids apply this year which is crazy, um, but I think this is what helped me get into the school because um, a lot of schools, they obviously they want good test scores and they want to know that you can um, keep your academics up through high school, or not high school, through college, but um, they also want to see like an actual person. They don't want someone that just has like all these giant test scores and like is super smart, but doesn't do anything else. So. Um, for me, I'm super involved in our school. Like we have like a small school, like I said before, but we have a lot of clubs, honestly. Like, uh, I guess I'll talk about sports first because that's the least involved thing that I was in. Um, I did cross country and track all four years of high school, except for my senior year, I did not do track because I got out of I got out of athletics. I was always like never in that class, so I just cut that class. I was like, I'm not about it. I'm tired of this. I'm just trying to finish senior year up. But um, I did cross country all four years and track for the first three years. And then baseball, I sucked at baseball. I didn't really like playing baseball. I mean, I kind of liked it, but I mainly played because my brother wanted me to play. So I played that freshman and sophomore year. So um, I was kind of involved in sports and cheer, which is what I'm going to do in college. Um, I did that for my sophomore, junior, and senior year. I didn't do my freshman year because I didn't want to do it. Even my sophomore year, actually. There's a whole story behind this. I'm not about to get into all that. If you want a, another video about how I got into cheer, we can do another video about that because I'll just go on for another hour. Okay, so that's what I did in like sports. For clubs, I've 
my freshman year, I wasn't super involved, but my sophomore year, that's whenever I actually joined clubs and like tried to get run for office and stuff like that. So um, sophomore year, I ran for class president. The rest of the years, I was the my class of 2018 um, class president. And then environmental club, I joined my sophomore year also, and I was just a member. And then I became the treasurer my junior year and the president my senior year. So um, there's another like leadership roles there. Um, for BPA, um, I joined that my junior year, and whenever I joined it, I like jumped right in. I became like a regional president my junior year, and then my senior year, I was regional president and chapter president. So like that's a big leadership role, the regional president. There's like 13 regions in Texas, and you're like in charge of that whole region, and like you have to set up uh, our regional leadership conference and help at the state leadership conference and at the National Leadership Conference. So that was like a super cool experience. I'm part of student council. I was the student council spirit officer, but this year, like every year, it's just gotten like less and less involved with the school. Well, honestly, all we do really is Red Ribbon Week. So uh, don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> and so um, I was a student council spirit officer from my sophomore year through senior year and yearbook. Um, and then last is our theater program, which I talked about before. Um, I did that all four years of high school. And um, I got multiple awards from like different events, um, different levels. And so our theater program has gotten really good at our school. Honestly, we made it, we were one step away from state two years in a row. And um, my first and my last year, we made it to area, which is before, uh, it's two steps away from state. So like, it wasn't the best, but especially ending there. And I didn't even get an award at the last competition. So it kind of sucked. <laughs> Okay, so those are like all the clubs that I'm in. I'm like, I, I wouldn't say that I was super involved because I wanted to get into college and all that. I just was like involved because I wanted to do it. That's one thing that I heard is that um, colleges don't want to see that, oh, you're just part of these clubs to like write down clubs and all that community service hours. They want to see that you're actually like wanting to be in this. Like environmental club is super important to me. And um, a lot of things I would talk about, like all my community service was mainly around environmental scope. So I, it's important to do things that you actually want to do and not things that are just, you're just doing them because, oh, I want to get into this college. So make sure that you're doing things that you actually care about and you, sometimes they even have you write essays. Luckily for me, I didn't have to write any essays because um, just my class rank and my test scores, I didn't have to write any essays. So that was good um, that I didn't have to worry about all that nonsense. Um, but if they ask you to write essays, you can go into depth of like why you do things and why you actually are part of these clubs. All right, so now I'm gonna actually get into the colleges that I applied to. So um, a lot of them are schools in Texas because I kind of wanted to go out of state, but I only really wanted to go to California or like New York. It was like either the West Coast or the East Coast. I'm like, I didn't want to go anywhere else really. And so I'll start with the Texas schools and I'm gonna go from like highest acceptance rate to like lowest So the first Texas school I applied to I applied to UTSA, which is University of Texas in San Antonio and San Antonio is the prettiest city to me in Texas The Riverwalk is like so beautiful. Anyways, San Antonio was like a school I wanted to go to my sophomore year. That was like my number one choice but then I was like no, I want to go to San Diego and then senior year I was like, okay, actually like how am I gonna pay for all this? So yeah, I ended up changing all my mind. Senior year has been hectic with what I actually ended up choosing, like what I was trying to figure out all year. But this is my like acceptance packet from UTSA. And they give you like a little sign, all the information. I kept all my stuff basically. A little hashtag future road, roadrunner sign. <sighs> I kept all my stuff so I'm just gonna pull out like the things that they sent me. Okay, so um, the acceptance rate was 76% at UTSA, so, and my test scores made, uh, qualified me, my test scores and my GPA and all that qualified me for automatic acceptance. So I knew I was getting into school there. I mean, it was 76%, so only 24% don't get in, so it's not very hard. This is also, again, with Texas State. Um, it was 71% acceptance rate, and they, I automatically was accepted there. So, um, this year I actually was like super set on Texas State like I went to cheer camps um, there for like tryouts and all that and Texas State in San Marcos is so pretty like if anybody is from out of state and they're thinking about applying to Texas schools 
Texas State is super good, and especially if you want to go into theater, they have a good theater program there. Yeah, so they send these out also, which a lot of Texas schools do these, but I don't know, a lot of other out-of-state schools don't do it, and I think it's kind of dumb that they don't because these are super cool. Now onto the out-of-state schools, so, um, the reason why I applied to some out-of-state schools was because I wanted to cheer in college, and I looked up, like, um, I think, like, my sophomore year, the end of my sophomore year, I saw, like, an article, and it was talking about, like, the best schools in America for, like, cheerleading, and Hofstra was one of them, and, um, Hofstra is like right outside of New York. It's in New York, but like it's outside of New York City. Like it's a 30 minute um, train ride and I really wanted to go there. The only thing was it was a private school and I'm pretty not rich. So, and the acceptance rate is 63%. So again, it's not that low. So it's not that hard to get into. But um, I got like my information here. Um, I got the acceptance letter and all that. What was super cool about Hofstra I can never tell. They sent me this little sticky note on my acceptance letter, and um, it. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you. Like, I had to write a little bit of an essay of why I wanted to go there. It was like a short answer, kind of. But they sent me this sticky note, and it says, um, "Alexander, I hope you bring your amazing spirit to Hofstra. Congrats, and welcome to the family, Christy." So part of the people that were doing the accepting, um, they wrote these out. I think I'm pretty sure it's handwritten. I can't tell if they're printed on. A lot of times they just print them on things. But they talked about spirit, and that's what I talked about in my essay, um, and how I wanted to be a cheerleader there and all that, so um, I'm pretty sure it was like an actual, she actually wrote it out. But um, I actually ended up getting the Dean Scholarship for Hofstra, and um, it was 19500 a year. Um, but the amount that you have to pay for it for Hofstra actually is like way more than that because it's a private school. Let me just tell you, Private schools are expensive. I mean, I knew that before, but literally they're so expensive. So, um, whenever you get scholarships, most of the time they're still like the same as paying full tuition and room and board at a normal college. So, so that's all I gotta say about that. Now for the final like out of state school that I applied to. So, um, I only applied to two out of state schools before I ended up um, choosing my actual school that I wanted to go to. and. San Diego State was a school that I absolutely wanted to go to like um, since junior year I decided like I want to go there like they had super great culture it's in San Diego California like how much more can you ask for but their culture and their pride Aztec pride is like super crazy and I followed um, SDSU cheer on Instagram and like I had to unfollow them because I really wanted to go but it's an out-of-state school and it's in California so the amount of money you have to pay to go to school in California is so expensive, but, um, so they sent me this thing, and it, okay, the application fee for this thing was, like, $75 or something, it was so expensive, but, and I'm like, they get a lot of money, because 96,000 people applied there, and every person has to pay, like, $75 for it, so, they're making money, but, um, they sent me the, the folder was super cool, and it gave me all this information about, like, pamphlets, and, stickers all kinds of open house information like there's big old magazines of why you should go to school here and all this stuff and they send you this little tiny pamphlet of how to pay for your education like how, what do you think i'm gonna pay for like this is expensive it's like thirty six thousand a year okay you can't even see thirty six thousand a year for out-of-state students to go to school there but I'm pretty sure if I actually would have um, tried out for their cheer program, I would have made it. And if you make the cheer program, you don't get scholarships. Most cheer schools, or most schools don't give you scholarships for cheer, but they, um, like here in SDSU, they would have canceled my um, out-of-state fees. So it would have been the same as in-state fees, but <laughs> it's still so expensive. So I ended up not choosing to go to San Diego State because it, I needed to save money. I was pretty proud whenever I got in San Diego because I really didn't think I was going to get into San Diego. Um, so for the final out-of-state school that I applied to, I don't even have paper for it because uh, my mom has all the information, but um, um, this school reached out to me and they told me that they give scholarships for cheer because they are um, they don't do NCAA, they are in, they're under the NAIA um, collegiate program, so um, they give scholarships for cheer. 
and I was debating. I honestly wasn't really sure of going there because it was like 15 hours away and it's not like in a giant area. Like San Diego was like super far, but it was still closer to this than this school. But San Diego was like in this big city that like, um, I don't know. I just wanted to go to a giant university basically. And they sent my scholarship package and I received like a pretty good amount of money for my academics and my cheer. Um, for my like, both my grades and like um, being on the cheer team so I was like still debating about it and I ended up just one day was just like I think I'm gonna go to that school like they're paying for most of my college and it's gonna get me away from home so like a lot of people want to stay close to home whenever they go to college a lot of people a lot more people want to travel away and that's kind of where I was like I wanted to get away um, <laughs> Texas is not the state for me as a young teen it's so boring, especially in like South Texas in the middle of nowhere. I wanted to go to somewhere different and I ended up choosing Lindenwood Belleville. Kind of a small school, it's a university, but it's kind of like a, a community college feel, I would say a little bit, because the campus isn't like humongous. It's There's only a couple of buildings, honestly. But um, I'm pretty excited to go to school here and ready to see what's gonna be ahead for me. So, I know this video is probably like already 20 minutes long, but thank you guys for watching um, If you have any questions Comment down below and if you I'll probably put down my test scores and all that in the bottom Just so y'all can remember because I'm pretty sure most of y'all forgot I was watching videos and I was like I don't even remember what your test score was So I'm gonna put that down in the description so you can get information about that but um, if you have any questions about like Texas colleges or like how stressful senior year is or anything that has to do with college or like cheer or anything else you want you can um, put it down in the comments below go check out my other cheer videos so you can see like um, if you're here and you want to do cheer in college you can see like what I have and you can probably go from there to see if you can get into colleges and get scholarships and all that um, I guess that's it guys thank you for watching like comment subscribe do what you want with your life uh, I gotta go. Oh my god, this video's already 30 minutes. Gotta go. <laughs>